Hello, I'm Chris Brown, Fleet Group Editor at Bobbitt, and welcome to the next episode of Fast Forward Interview Series. Fast Forward is about connecting with leaders in fleet, tech, and automotive to show what the future holds for fleets of all types. In this episode, I interview Nick Bettis, Director of Marketing and Sales Operations for Lightning E-Motors. Nick and I will discuss the new ways fleet managers can improve efficiencies in their electric vehicle fleet by implementing a gamification program with their EV drivers. But before we begin, be sure to subscribe to the Fleet Forward YouTube channel so you don't miss future episodes of Fast Forward. And hey, feel free to drop us a comment on the channel. Okay, let's get into it. Well, hi, Nick. Welcome to the next episode of Fast Forward. Thanks, Chris. Great to be here. Sure. Well, let's start out. um, Just tell us a little bit about Lightning E-Motors. Yeah, thanks. So Lightning E-Motors is a company we've been around since about 2007. Started off as a hydraulic hybrid company, uh, pitching class three through seven vehicles with uh, hydraulic hybrid uh, acceleration devices in them. And in 2017 or so, the company saw the writing on the wall that all electric was the future, uh, both for the environment as well as in the business environment. So uh, we, we retasked the company and uh, we're now an all electric company. We provide, we take known OEM chassis such as Ford, Eno, GM, and we electrify those, those vehicles uh, so that they are, they go from internal combustion, diesel or gasoline to all electric zero emissions. So uh, we've also announced that we're working on our capacity as well. So yeah, that's kind of the, the overview. Okay, great. Um, you know, and, and Nick, you spoke at the Fleet Forward Conference in November and really presented some interesting data sets on how EVs perform based on various criteria. Can you just kind of go through some of those factors? Yeah, so as part of our, our product offering, we both handle the vehicle and the charging side, and we collect an immense amount of data through our telematics applications that are standard on every vehicle. So we've got over a million miles now of EV real world, all electric data. So before the conference, I went in and I mined all of that data to get an idea of, of what does the impact, uh, what is the impact of, of cold temperatures, of hilly conditions um, uh, and various other factors. And that's what I went through. So some of the interesting information that we came back with was that extremely hot conditions t- tend to not impact EV range too much. We had a vehicle that was running in Phoenix at 120 degree ambient temperature for a week, uh, off and on for a week. And we didn't see any drop off in the range really at all. Uh, on the other hand, in cold temperatures, we define cold in this particular case as anything below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, we saw about a 10% drop off in efficiency for the vehicle. Now I need to couch the, the information I'm presenting here today with all of our vehicles are thermally managed. The batteries are thermally managed. So we feel like we're, we're mitigating some of that drop off. It probably would be higher if that were not the case. But for those who are looking at electrifying their fleets in, in either uh, seasonally cold temperatures or relatively permanently cold temperatures, uh, it is, that is a factor that needs to be considered. We also looked at uh, hilly conditions. So we, we took a look at standard deviations of, of the grade that the vehicle was either dropping or inclining throughout the day. Um, and we found that there was an impact on, on range based on hilly conditions of about 15% for extremely hilly conditions. So vehicles going up a steep grade um, and then coming back down that same grade, there was more energy used going up that grade than there was coming down. Um, Again, mitigated, however, because of the regenerative braking that's on all of the vehicles. I mean, it's pretty much standard on all electric vehicles at this point, but our vehicles have that as well. So um, we did see about a 10 or 15% drop off in range based in extremely hilly conditions. Um, and then probably the, the biggest factor that, that's a little harder to, to quantify is driver behavior. And I think uh, you know, there are ways to do that. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, I think it's interesting that uh, Essentially, the colder temperatures probably have a, a, a more of a factor than, I guess, uh, payload, would you say? Um, yeah. How did payload factor in there? You, you know, surprisingly, the, the payload on the vehicles we, that we, uh, we analyzed was not as big a factor as we had anticipated. 
Uh, we saw about a 5% drop off um, over the over a range from fully loaded to, uh, to fully empty for a class six delivery truck that we had deployed in California. Now I will say that the, the data on that particular topic is a little limited. So I don't want everybody to go out there and say that we're gonna load 20,000 pounds of cargo on a class six truck and we're gonna get roughly the same range we had before. Um, but we, we found that temperature, cold temperature was a bigger impact on range than was the, the, the higher payloads based on the data. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And, and um, the whole driver equation here is really interesting because that allows for some pretty wide areas of improvements uh, because you can control your drivers and you can, can, you know, ask them to modify their driving habits. And certainly in the past, say, you know, 10 years, uh, the idea of gamification to improve driving, uh, improve safety, improve efficiency with driving uh, has really come into the fore for fleet. And now what a great opportunity as it relates to electrification. Uh, so maybe you can go over a program we discussed on, on gamification and EVs. Yeah, and you hit on a great point there. You can you can ask, you can try and control driver behavior, but the feedback we get from uh, a lot of our customers that it's it's challenging to control that behavior. Uh, and it's better to try and incent the behavior than just try and insist on, on some kind of a behavioral change. So when we saw that that was a, a feedback we were getting from our customers, we looked at what we could do to try and uh, uh, gamify efficiency in electric vehicles. So we took, uh, as a pilot program, we took on one of our fleets on the East Coast. It, it consisted of 10 E450 box trucks. Um, and we worked with them to, to identify which vehicles were uh, associated with which drivers. Uh, we took that, we benchmarked what the efficiency of a specific driver was, not on, on a vehicle, but on a specific driver. And then we put together a program with, with our customer to, uh, on a two week basis, we were gonna re-snapshot the, the efficiency over the course of that period uh, for each driver. And then any driver that had, whichever drivers had the highest efficiency improvement uh, or the highest efficiency for that two week period would get some kind of a, a gift. So. Um, working with this fleet, we deployed this in late October. Uh, we determined that a two week interval probably was the best uh, to run this. And we're gonna continue to run this over a course of several months just to see how, how much more improvement we can get. But we've been two th through two cycles of this so far and we've seen we've gotten some pretty good information and some pretty good data from this. So um, on the first round, uh, the, the process was interesting too. Uh, working with them, uh, with the customer, we did driver training. We announced the program to the drivers. So this is what we're going to do. Um, we're going to train you on how to better use these vehicles. Uh, and we did it on site. We actually traveled to their location and said, this is how you use regenerative braking. This is how you, uh, you know, if you reduce the use of HVAC, whether it be heating or cooling, um, you can improve efficiency. All the different factors uh, using regenerative braking more effectively. Um, all of those factors uh, can improve range. We train them on how to do that. And then we turned them loose. And what we found was that the, uh, the, the fleet overall was experiencing a 0.96 miles per kilowatt hour average efficiency on a, on a lightning electric E450 box truck. Uh, after the first week, the fleet efficiency had gone up to 0.98% or 98 miles per kilowatt hour. Um, and after the second week, it had jumped up to 1.0 kilowatts per hour. So we saw um, you know, a full four point jump in the overall efficiency of the fleet over a, a one month period. Um, on the winners, the, the specific vehicles, the top two winners um, the, on the first week uh, was their benchmark uh, to begin with was 0.91 miles per kilowatt hour as a result of the first week uh, or the first two week period. Theirs jumped to 0.99 miles per kilowatt hour. It was a 9% jump. And then this, the, the second period winner started off at 0.92 miles per kilowatt hour. And his result after, after a, a month was 1.08 miles per kilowatt hour, 17% increase. So you know, this proves to us that um, driver training really is essential in the EV market. Uh, if you look at 17% increase on a, on a vehicle that's gonna get 100 to 120 miles per kilowatt hour, yeah, that's a significant number. That's, 15 to 20 miles of additional range on a vehicle. Uh, so if you're needing that additional range, training your drivers can be a very effective way to uh, uh, 
to extend range without having to do additional charging or look at additional costs to increase battery size. Um, the rewards that we, we gave these drivers, we started off with uh, uh, the week one, we did a bunch of uh, lightning e-motor swag, uh, uh, premium swag. So we gave them uh, OtterBox tumblers and, and a $50 gift card to Amazon. The, the second winter we gave uh, a couple of, of uh, uh, lightning e-motors branded uh, shirts and a $50 gift card to uh, Outback Steakhouse. So uh, it was not an insignificant gift and, and the feedback from the drivers has been excellent. Uh, they love the fact that they can get a little extra stuff and uh, the, the company that they're working with is getting more range out of their vehicles. Yeah, that sounds great. I, I've uh, heard that uh, uh, HVAC is a pretty big operational factor as it relates to range, particularly um, heating the cabin. Um, is that something that you're aware of? Yeah, the, the HVAC really is the, the large heating in particular is the biggest contributor. So when you're working in or when you're driving in a, uh, an environment that's extremely cold, uh, putting on another sweater or putting on a jacket, not leaving the door open when you get out to make a delivery or, uh, or to, to do whatever you've got to do in your vehicle to, to let out a, drop a wheelchair lift, uh, leave, not leaving that door open and letting all the cabin heat out really does make a huge difference. Uh, as, as represented by the, the efficiency based on temperature earlier. And that's not just an, a drop in the efficiency of the batteries or the, the, the energy costs necessary to heat the batteries in cold temperatures. Um, it's also a matter of heating the cabin and keeping people comfortable. So yeah, HVAC is, uh, heating in particular, is, is particularly uh, damaging to efficiency. Sure, great, great information. Just to wrap up, um, what are some high level points to get a fleet manager that has EVs in their fleet thinking along the lines of setting up a gamification program for electric vehicle performance? Well, we're happy to work with any of our customers to get it going. Our hope is that we will do this for a couple of months. And then in order to maintain that behavior that the, the fleets will take over the program and continue to run it. We'll run it as long as we need to for the fleet to be successful. Um, and we're happy to do it with anyone, any fleet that, that works with us. Um, beyond that, the, uh, you, you know, again, as I mentioned before, you can, you can mandate, you can ask, but with the, the current labor condition, a lot of our customers are finding it hard to find and maintain drivers. Um, so using the hammer rather than the carrot or the stick rather than the carrot uh, can be a little, uh, demoralizing maybe or, or impactful to retention. So uh, I definitely think the gamification program either executed through Lightning E-Motors or, or internally is, is a great way to, uh, to get more out of your EV fleet. Sure, and I guess just to um, sort of level set on, on what's needed to begin, that would be, I mean, you need to be able to pull that telematics data and yeah. measure it in a way that makes sense. Yeah, you've got to be able to take a look at um, and, and match up to, to each vehicle, the driver, if they're not assigned to a specific vehicle, which is typically the case. So um, it does take a little legwork if, if you don't have some kind of an RFID scanner or something to associate a driver with a vehicle. It can take a little legwork, maybe an Excel spreadsheet or something to assign specific or to associate specific vehicles to drivers. Um, so that can be a little bit of legwork, but what you get out of that is, is, uh, is very valuable. And you've got to be able to identify what you're what you, uh, you know, how the vehicle's being used, where is the energy going? Um, it's great to be able to say, well, his efficiency was uh, was X and then it was Y, but how do you say, well, your, yours didn't go up, Joe, uh, and here's why. You gotta be able to look at the telematics and say, you were blasting the heat, um, you're, you're slamming on the accelerator and, and, uh, and shotgun on your starts. You weren't using regenerative braking, you were using your actual brake pads instead that's all something that your telematics should be able to tell you. And, and you can relay that information back to the driver and train them on how to use the vehicle correctly, even after you know, initial training has been done. Sure. Well, that's great. And that's really uh, overall how we're going to need to use telematics in an EV environment, uh, regardless of gamification. Uh, well, Nick, thank you for all the great information. And um, we'll talk to you soon. All right, Chris, thank you so much.